Hey, it's a new day. So it looks like the other footage from the beginning of this video was on the 14th, and it's now the 18th. So it's been a couple days since I did that last uh, bit, and I wanted to show you something. Um, I went and got some Corona wire out of some printers. I actually have a couple of junk, uh, like scanner, copier, big things, and so um, HHO Info mentioned it, and somebody else mentioned it. Uh, I don't remember, so. I went and got some because I have some. Okay, I'm going to show you what it looks like. It's going to be hard to see. Actually, you probably won't even be able to see it because it's just that small. It's really, really tiny stuff. Uh, there's this this little wire. You can see it there. Not the line on the bottom, but there's a little line on top. Uh, it's it's really hard to see. So, so that wire is teeny tiny in there. Uh, again, it's it's not that right there. It's actually right there. So it's teeny tiny little stuff, you know. And the smaller the wire, um, the less surface area. So it's actually a good thing. So, um, on my device, I told you I use a welding rod. Well, I went back, as I mentioned earlier in my little text. I went back and actually put the original uh, stainless steel wire I had on there because it was a lot smaller. It seemed to work a lot better. Um, so I wanted to test this out, right? So I had this, uh, this is a different one. So I had this high voltage power supply hooked up to it. And it's stretched so tight. Let's see if you can hear it. Okay. It's stretched so tight it's like a musical instrument string. It's that tight. And actually I think about using something like that if they're stainless. But here's what I got, okay, and I decided to hook it up to this power supply that you've seen me use on, on, on this device. It's got quite a few amp uh amperage amps to it. I don't know what it is actually, but it's it's quite a bit. Um and that's actually probably a bad thing, but it's it it's working for this. So I hooked it up to this little wire and it you could hear it, you know, like you could hear the corona discharge, but you couldn't see it. And then it popped a few times as far as arced, and then all of a sudden it just goes ping pow, and it, yeah, just ka ping pow, just like that. Uh, you want to do it again? Ka ping pow, yeah. So it broke, and I'm afraid if I go back and rebuild this thing again, and put it, um, you know, if I put this little bitty tiny wire inside here, and that gas gun, it's just gonna pop, and then I'm gonna have to redo the entire thing. So, what I'm going to do is actually get a flyback transformer uh, from a TV and just pulse it and try to use it as a high voltage uh, device. Uh, it's a positive output, it's got a diode built into it, and so it's already positive voltage, so I'm ready to go on that note. So, if I got time, I'll put it on this video. If not, it'll be a new video. Uh, well, anyway, so I told you I was going to try a high voltage transformer, a CRT flyback transformer here. So I've got the rustic frequency generator, and I turned this fan on. I got it temporarily hooked up to this battery because the the problem right now that I'm having is <laughs> this transformer, this flyback transformer, out of a CRT TV pulls way. Too many amps, um, and I've got it way over here because it was interfering with some electronics. Not very good. So I kind of wanted to show you what I got and show you that it won't work uh, the way I want it because of certain reasons. And I'm going to show you what that is. The main reason is because my other high voltage power supply right here is a constant voltage output of DC, where this is a pulsing DC. And actually, I'm having some issues because I was I, I want to be able to pulse this. So, in order to do this the way I really want to, it might get a little tricky. Um, the Rustic uh, 7.0 is definitely needed. This only has one output. This is like the version 4 or whatever it is, 5. Um, which is only, really, there's only two versions, but it's just the, the updates that we had. So, uh, I guess I haven't really shown you the whole gun yet. Uh, three terminals up here. High voltage positive high voltage negative and this one here is the extraction grid okay you can see it goes right to the extraction grid extraction, 
extraction grid is actually right almost up in, in the side of that thing. So you can see the the negative here going down to that outside rail and the positive here going to the inside rail and then I've just spread these out as far as I could get them. Um, that way nothing arcs. So I want to show you what I got while the they are right here. See that brown spot? I don't know if I got a little bit of oil on here or what, but it's actually burning through this this plastic material that I have. Um, I actually don't know what it is, but I got told it was for high voltage insulation. It almost looks like Durlin, but it might be something else. Um, so I'll uh, I'll turn the lights off so you can see it, and then I'll set this thing up. All right, so I'm going to stay back from this thing. I'm going to turn that one bad spot towards the outside here so we can see it. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and turn the rustic on. We'll stay back because this thing throws off some pretty nasty EMF. So, go ahead and turn it on. Show you the that little burning. That's actually the edge of the... Uh, See that arc that I just had? That's, that, that's what I don't want. Not right there. Uh, not getting very good footage of it. So let me get this set right where I was wanting it. Just about right there. I'm controlling the amount of output by the frequency. And there really isn't a good angle here. You can see some arcing that I don't want. And then right above that there's some arcing that I do want but you can't really can't really see it so um, but if you seen the last one last video where I actually um, see that's what I don't want Wait, if you've seen the last video where it's a nice corona discharge. Oh, there's that arc again. See that arc in there is what I don't want. So I gotta turn the frequency down just to the point where it stops arcing, but where there's a corona effect. So there's there's a point. You just you can't see it. All right, so I've got the uh, lights back on. You can't really still see the discharge that I was trying to show you. Um, you did see it in the previous video, um, the one where I actually used this bigger power supply, and there's a really nice Corona discharge field. So it looks like a, a constant positive DC is going to be my best option for ionizing. Now, uh, when you talk, when you start talking about the electron extraction grid and the LEDs, you actually pulse the um, one device and then and then the LEDs and the extraction grid and I gotta figure out the exact area and timing and all that. I don't have it memorized right now. I did a lot of a lot of that research a little while back and I gotta go back through a few of it. I wasn't really sure then either to the T. So kind of just informing you what the deal is here. Um, and you can see down here how it's starting to burn. I, I really think I got some oil on there and it's kind of tracing that oil and kind of burning. Because it's not doing it up here, it's just down at the bottom. Uh, but yeah, so the idea behind this thing is to pulse these at certain rates and certain frequencies. And right now, with a flyback transformer, it's not looking so good. Now the thing you got to remember is that originally with uh, Stan's VIC, it's a it's a totally different animal and so he was actually using the resonance effect of his VIC to create what he's doing but it's pretty much uh, DC ionization and then he's extracting the negative electrons kinda of go through that another time um, probably the end of this uh, gas gun series and I'll be doing some digging researching and work and come back with more information for you. Um, the rustic's working really well though. I got the fan on because this uh, 
I mean, these wires are getting hot, hot. It's draining that battery down to nothing. So, I might actually hook this back up to the high voltage supply real quick and just show you the difference. And then we'll continue on. Alright, so I did really quickly want to show you the power I'm playing with. Um, to let you know. That's what kind of, you know, power I'm playing with here. It's quite a bit of, uh arcage and you know I'm really looking for a nice corona effect so about right there I know it's hard to see but you can see see those fine lines before it arcs that's the corona discharge I'm looking for right there that's actually not an arc that's an arc Okay, and it's right there I can smell that ozone like mad. And then once you start arcing, it's not quite as heavy, but you can definitely still smell it. But I just want the discharge. So, anyway. Now I'm doing the modulating signals with the pulse, the gating. And shutting her down. She's starting to smoke, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. Alright, so that that's the kind of power I'm playing with. I just kind of wanted to let you know that's the that's the amount of high voltage. This thing puts off a pretty good amount. And you can modify these. Wrap a external coil around this side of this uh, ferrite and use it as your primary. And you can really do some nasty stuff with these transformers. Flybacks. <laughs>